uh, arrested for war crimes trials and committed suicide in prison. This one kind of special. When it opens, it's more than one meter length and the <laughs> most rare here. Hello everybody, this is War Story Video Blog. I am Alex and here we are in Allentown Military Antique Show and here I will uh, stay until next uh, Sunday and I will show you uh, some items from this show and then I will show you items I found here. But now uh, I want to ask uh, John Lawson about his personal collection, about two items from his personal collection because he uh, brought it here uh, for the show because show it's not just about uh, selling and buying sometimes, uh, it's like a museum you can just uh, see and enjoy items that other collectors uh, brought back here and just want to show. Hello, John. How are you? I'm fine, Alex. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Welcome to the Allentown Show. Thank you. Thank you. It's a great show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, um, could you tell us about your swords and, uh, from your collection? These are two swords out of my personal collection. Uh, the top one here, if you can get a shot of the blade, it's a silver, early silver SS officer sword with port pay with a triple engraved blade. And the blade reads, for Fuhrer, Folk, and Fatherland, uh, presented from Aza to her husband, boyfriend, on, let's see, uh, October 20th, 1935. So we have an early SS sword here. I believe it's an Alcozo, nice blade. And then the bottom one is a, a recent acquisition, plain dovehead hilt, but a beautiful blade which basically says, don't draw me without purpose, don't sheath me without honor, which was a standard um, uh, inscription that you saw on blades. Again, it's triple engraved, but this is, is named to a Hauptsturmführer Hinze. And I did some research on Hauptsturmführer Hinze. He became a Sturmbannführer, and he was um, with the SD Gestapo and uh, he was involved in um, Einsatzgruppen in Serbia, and then he went on to uh, Gestapo office in Hamburg, where he got involved with the swing kids. And they were the kids who were um, advocates of big band music and uh, refused to join the Hitler Youth. They were sort of like rebels. And uh, Mr. Uh, Sturmbannführer Hinze cracked down on them, and then he was also involved in the Hamburg branch of the White Rose. So he was a pretty notorious guy. Uh, he ended the war, he ended up uh, arrested for war crimes trials and committed suicide in prison. But this was his presented sword and uh, just a key part of the collection. And thank you very much for your explain. And um, this is a great war souvenirs because uh, when you have something like like we told before, when you have something from uh, like badass guy, yeah, yes, is it correct to say? Well, yes, uh, it's a, like a symbol of uh, beating him. Yes. Uh, yes. So that's why it display with uh, honor, not because of his, uh, he did something yes, because yes. of uh, GIs or uh, Soviet troops, any any troops, yes. just beat him. Yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, very important to understand and very important to explain to um, new generation, for my, on my opinion. <laughs> yes, I agree. Yeah. And uh, thank you very much for uh, sharing with us uh, this stuff because most collectors just pre prefer to keep it in, they keep uh, it in, yeah. in the closet. <laughs> yes, or... and no, d d don't show it to yeah. anybody. But here, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Really yeah, appreciate historical it. Historical value and uh, show it to the younger generation, get them involved. And... Yeah. Bring them into the hobby. Exactly. Uh, thank you. So I want to go and uh, film around the show, around this hall. Uh, thank you very much for your time. All and right. uh, see you next time. See you next time.
And here we can see Japanese parachute and these Japanese parachutes, uh, another color, not that one I have on my uh, hotel room. This one is green with uh, yellow straps, which means um, it is Navy parachute, uh, Japanese Navy uh, paratroopers or fighters, pilots uh, used these uh, parachutes and we can see uh, matching numbers here. This, this is a main parachute and this is a back for this particular this one and uh, you can see it fit perfectly and uh, we can see here all uh, parts of it and uh, it's actually packed um, properly and here inside the back we can see also uh, part of the parachute and uh, more parts straps and uh, all stuff that uh, paratrooper needs for um, his back. So this really nice broad back piece uh, with this also Japanese flag. And uh, we can see a lot of pictures with Japanese uh, war souvenirs when GIs or uh, Marine uh, Corps um, guys brought back. And we can see a lot of pictures with uh, them with flags also. You can see it on your screens. Actually, here we can see one more interesting thing. Uh, this is Arisaka, Arisaka bayonet with um, special uh, thing that uh, don't let uh, bayonet out of. Uh, let me open it. Uh, don't let bayonet out of the scabbard. Um, you can see it's like a little custom, um, but anyway, it's very interesting thing so this one have uh, repaint scabbard but anyway I'm thinking about uh, this one because this piece is like kind of cool uh, and what else also we can see here a special clip this special clip is a safer uh, you can't uh, press it this way but if you close it or open it you can just um, open all these clips uh, clip with four um, how to say it like four places uh, clips please help me call this uh, stuff properly but anyway you see what I mean nice uh, really cool thing and uh, what else we can see here on this table uh, I just bought from this uh, box one really nice piece uh, this is pole bayonet and I will show it to you it's like a kind of Japanese Volkssturm item and this is interesting bayonet uh, it looks like Arisaka bayonet but it's not uh, this is a pole bayonet for uh, civilian defense in Japan uh, and we can see it cost 800 bucks um, and uh, actually this is a really not expensive because it could be 1000 uh, because it's really rare it is a late period uh, very simple bayonet uh, blade we can see here stamp on the blade and we do not uh, see this special button to fix it uh, with uh, rifle but we can see here special cross guard with two holes uh, for fix it on the pole so this one kind of special in a special scabbard and very rare uh, item it's like kind of uh, Japanese Volkssturm uh, item so I really uh, proud myself I found it here and uh, it was not that expensive and um, what is your opinion on uh, this uh, stuff is it cool isn't it <laughs> This one is knife. It's a folding knife. Uh, it cost three thousand eight hundred, and this one is really huge. It's like um, I don't know when it open. It's more than one meter length, and <laughs> you can see it on screen. I took pictures with me, and this one is really a rare piece. And um, most likely, it was sample uh, for any. Uh, knife folding knife company and it could be uh, just on the display of any uh, magazine sh uh, of any shop uh, or uh, folding knife store so this one is uh, really cool and um, you see a lot of people collect uh, like sample items and uh, this is one of them I'm almost sure um, some more pieces 
we can see here. This is a big display with items, with American items, uh, and all this piece I want to uh, explore more because uh, I live here now and um, I'm really interested in um, history of uh, this country, especially about military his military antiques history. Because uh, a lot of medals, a lot of, a lot of badges, uh, we can see here a lot of people uh, collected and they just uh, wondering and uh, curious about all this stuff and uh, it would be great to learn it more but uh, we have time anyway uh, here on the show we can see a lot of uh, pieces and also we can see here German stuff uh, for example this uh, flag uh, bayonets this is a um, fireman bayonet uh, original K98 bayonet uh, this is uh, true war souvenirs because uh, it was like um, part of uh, tunic and insignia from tuning just cut off uh, and uh, we can see it was very popular war souvenir when um, GIs just cut uh, pieces of tunics uh, away from uh, prisoners of war from Germans and um, here we can see more awards, medals, uh, crosses, some firearms also here and um, German uh, Navy badges. Uh, this is a really nice display with uh, different uh, condition, different style and different types of uh, uh, these items. I want, I already did, I already filmed about these awards, about these badges um, on my Russian speaking channel, but I have to explain more about these items in English speaking channel. Now I guess I can try with my level of uh, English. And uh, I already shown you some of these items uh, on SOS show, for example, this uh, U-Boat Commander's um, kit. And anyway, this is a really interesting uh, pieces. I will uh, stop here and uh, see it closer. Here we can see a lot of Russian and Soviet uh, awards and uh, this is a really huge display with uh, Soviet badges, with uh, Russian Imperial badges and uh, I enjoyed to see it because um, actually in Russia it's forbidden to sell uh, any awards like this, any like government awards, it's like the same rule like in United States with Medal of Honor. Uh, but here it's possible to, to sell it, to trade it, to deal in with it. And um, I do like to see on all of this. And here we can see a lot of badges, uh, World War II period, for example. And uh, most rare here, um, probably this, uh, the best artillerist, uh, you can see here circle and hammer it's like a separate piece and uh, this one with blue animal it's like um, for the best pioneer uh, it's also very rare uh, the best baker it's the best for the best cooking and in my collection I have a full series of uh, these badges so I can show it to you and uh, I can explain about these items but I have to prepare myself with my English you know um, this is uh, pilot badges uh, this is for technical personnel in um, airfield uh, this is like um, observer and bomber and uh, this is for just pilot what else we can see here sniper and uh, this is like also kind of sniper for for the best shooting like the best shooting uh, badge and this one is also for um, best shooting and this one also for best shooting but it's like more early uh, one and uh, more uh, rare and uh, a lot of uh, fakes of uh, these items you can see exist on the market uh, but anyway if you have uh, right person who can tell you uh, you will not in the trouble and actually these two uh, red stars is a war period and pre-war period this one is a big one 36 millimeters uh, quite rare and uh, quite expensive if you see it for less than 100 bucks you have to buy it um, these two badges also interesting uh, this is for Hassan it's 1938 um, it was a conflict on uh, Hassan and this is uh, for best uh, serving in um, Red Army, so also pre-war uh, badge, so uh, really nice display, really nice uh, collection, and if you want to hear uh, more about Soviet badges, just let 
help me. Uh, no. And we can see here Cyrillic letters and uh, you can read this in, in subtitles now. But anyway, 1903 device here in the United States uh, from Russian Imperial. This is really cool. And actually, I was born probably 20 or 40 miles away from uh, this factory. So it's near St. Petersburg, it's Sestoretsk factory. It was the same factory where uh, produced first model of Mosin Nagan rifles in uh, Russian Imperial. So, and uh, Mosin actually uh, used to work there. I don't know how uh, interesting <laughs> this information for you guys, but anyway, I really like it and uh, I'm happy I bought it here. Uh, you know, it's pretty rare and uh, this is a pretty unique stuff and um, I will put it next to my um, working uh, table. So what else we can see here? Some more uh, badges and stuff like that and actually more just regular knives and uh, not everybody uh, bring back here uh, edged weapon and all stuff and here we can see like propaganda uh, things propaganda posters uh, I do not know is it reprints or originals but anyway it's still uh, interesting what else we can see here oh pictures also nice Actually, this one is nice. Uh, this is small Arisaka bayonet, a short Arisaka bayonet, and I want to see it closer, but there is no uh, seller here. I will wait him and uh, I will see it and probably show it to you also. And also here on this exhibition, I bought uh, a lot of stuff, a lot of really interesting stuff uh, I want to show you. You can see my display in hotel room. I already filmed a uh, live stream and um, I already shown it to you. But you can just check it on my uh, channel. It was like a few videos uh, before this one. Actually, um, here I bought really nice, two really nice Scottish Dukes I want to show you. Uh, and you can see it also on your screen, this really nicely done. And um, some more items, I will show it to you closer. And here we can see amazing piece. This is uh, MGOA part. You can see here this one made in uh, 1917 uh, in Zul. And uh, you can see it's MGO8 slash 15. And uh, interesting piece. We can see here uh, original camo, original vitrage camo with um, battle damage. So it's incredible piece, part of uh, original German machine gun that probably was in uh, position and then hit by um, maybe artillery shrapnel or uh, something else. But anyway, this one is really cool and pretty scarce to find uh, this part in camo because most of them just was in uh, regular uh, army paint. So uh, I think it's great item to display uh, next to the helmet. And actually there is no general parts, you know, uh, here and that's that's cool, just cool piece, uh, and it's empty inside. Wow, and also we can see here a uh, very interesting uh, Japanese sword, and this Japanese sword uh, with all papers on it. And uh, you can see here original pictures from uh, 1957, all pictures of uh, that guy who brought it back, and actually all uh, paper works. I have to figure it out what does that mean, but it's bring back papers. Uh, this is expertise and actually we can see here the mention that it is uh, 400 years old uh, sword inside uh, this cupboard. You can see it on screen. Uh, I just uh, took some pictures of it, but this one is really nice. It cost 9500 here on the table and uh, 
I will see it uh, closer after I finish this video. And there's this journal in this magazine, we can see interesting picture, probably you already saw it, uh, but a lot of war souvenirs, just pile of them, tons of them. Uh, we can see here uh, next from General Patton. And actually here we can see really nice war souvenirs on the uh, very famous guy. This is uh, Hermann Göring uh, with all his stuff and probably some collectors have all this uniform and uh, cap in his collection because they definitely took it. So uh, that is how all this hobby started.